Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning is on your health. My first guest is no stranger to this show. He's a graduate of Harvard, Columbia, and the University of Chicago's Pritzker School of Medicine, New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Ian Smith. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm sheltered in place, but I'm doing well. Thank you. Yes, and it's good to see that you're doing well. And, you know, since we've been going through um, this pandemic, there's this phrase that has come up called the quarantine 15. And it reminds me, of course, of the freshman 15 when kids go away to college and they're living off of potato chips and fast food and they come home and they're 15 pounds heavier. Well, that's kind of what a lot of people are experiencing with being at home more often than normal, snacking, eating, snacking some more in that order. So we need your new book more than ever before, <laughs> Mind Over Matter. Tell us more about this. Mind Over Weight. Yeah, Mind Over Weight is all about what happens in the six inches between your ears. I mean, so often I've talked to you about many of my diet programs and exercise programs. We often start with that. What is the best plan? How much should I be exercising? How should I exercise? But really it starts in the mind. You have to have your mind in the right place in order to be able to be more successful on whatever plan you choose. So many years people have asked me about motivation and cravings and boosting their confidence and fixing their addiction or their relationship to food. So I wanted to take all that information, all those intangibles, by the way, the most important intangibles, what I think are those that separate those who win and those who do not win. I wanted to put all that in one place for people. So that's why I wrote Mind Over Weight. It's a small book, as you see. It's mm -hmm. the size of my hand. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only seven chapters. Uh, at the end of each chapter, there is a little uh, action study guide that you create yourself so that when you're done with the book, you can just go to those action plans and be able to, you know, to, to, to execute off of your action plans. So I really wrote it for it to be uh, a kind of situation that people are able to work with it and to remember and analyze some of the roadblocks that they have succumbed to in the past. Yes, and you have helped us out plenty in the past with your uh, many books uh, that gives us motivation on so many different levels. But in Mind Over Weight, you actually start off with this self-assessment that's almost kind of like a questionnaire to kind of figure out or determine where we fall when it comes to actually being ready for change, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's called the Eureka Self-Assessment Tool. And basically what it does is it's, it lets you know whether or not you have a low degree of readiness to make change or a high degree of readiness. A lot of people, Andrea, they fail because they start programs at the wrong time. Um, they're stressed, uh, they have marital issues, relationship issues, bills, whatever it is, it's not the right time for them to undertake a transformative journey like weight loss. And so mm -hmm. this beginning of the book, Let's assess whether or not you're ready. And if you're not ready, let's wait a little bit. And then when you're ready, you can give it your all. So yeah, that's really important to start is the self-assessment test, but also understanding how to find your motivation and how to keep your motivation while you're in the middle of the journey. Yes, and I'm glad you brought up that word, motivation. It's huge because uh, we need it when it comes to getting started. We need it to stay on task. And even if we fail and kind of get off track, we need it to get back on track, right? <laughs> 100%. And this is why I think Mind Over Weight is going to be a game changer for so many people. Everyone has motivation. The question is, how deeply is it buried within you? For some, it's right at the surface. For others, it's very, very deep. And so the question is, how do you actually penetrate to go find that motivation and then to hold on to it? So chapter one is all about helping you analyze what really are your motivators, because we all have it. What are your internal motivators? Those are things that you do internally. For example, an internal motivator may be, uh, I read thrillers because I love the experience of being part of a cathartic experience. That's internal motivation. I'm, I'm, I'm in love with the process. I enjoy the process. Whereas external motivation may be, I'm going on vacation in three weeks, and so I want to lose 15 pounds, so I look great on the beach. I'm being externally rewarded by how I will look and the compliments I will receive once I go to the beach. So you need a combination of both internal and external in order to stay motivated. And in the book, I give you lists 
of different motivators that you can see what actually matches with you. Yes, and I love that because it's so very true that you're able to keen in on really knowing that those are the motivators for a lot of people. You know, even I'm turning 50 and I have to do this or I'm going to the beach, uh, whatever the case may be. But you're saying it doesn't always have to be a bad thing to have that as a motivator, but you have to be motivated enough to keep it up, right? That's right. Before we always say, don't be motivated by things that will go away, like a reunion, or you want to fit into a dress for a certain event. We would say, don't do that. Instead, be motivated by the fact that you want to live healthy and live longer and be happier. We realize, you know what? It's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. Things that are external to you that make you feel good, as well as things internal. So it's okay to have both in your bucket. Yeah, and you talked about, you know, creating this list and having these goals. And what I love is that, you know, it is kind of a victory when you have that dress hanging in your closet that you wore when you were on the NBA dance team, and now you can fit it. That's me. So, <laughs> but no, really, that is a reward. But you also have some non-scale victories you know, where people aren't just like on the numbers so hard that that determines whether they feel like they're doing well or not. So some of those uh, non-scale victories that you've said could be no fast food for a week or maybe sleeping through the night without waking up. And there's a list of things that people can, you know, really create as a non-scale victory. You know, we are so focused always on the number on the scale. And yes, that number is important, it means a lot for many different reasons, but yeah. there's so many other things we have to pay attention to. Those NSVs, non-scale victories, are critical. Whether or not you can walk up three flights of steps without getting winded. Are you able to do three sessions of exercise in a week? Find these smaller non-scale victories because what studies have shown is when you set these little milestones and you achieve them, then you're even motivated to go to the next milestone. So we definitely want to make sure that it's not just about the pounds on the scale, or what else is going on in your life, or what your functional level may be. It's true. When you know better, you do better. And I think that when you feel better and you can really tell the difference, then that is a motivator in itself to say, you know what, I'm not going back to that place. We're going to keep it going. So how are some ways that people can reward themselves? Because, you know, most of the time when we want to reward ourselves, what do we do? We go get a cupcake or go get something to eat. It doesn't always have to be about eating, right? Yeah. So a reward system is critical, by the way. Studies have shown that people who have appropriate reward systems really tend to do better and stay motivated. So, you know, you may say, I'm going to lose 20 pounds in three months, and then you may break it up in weeks. I want to lose week one, two pounds, week two, two pounds, and then you reward yourself. So if I achieve my milestones, my smaller milestones, I may buy myself a book I've been wanting to buy or download some music or buy a movie online, streaming, whatever. And then as you kind of hit the higher milestones, your reward should increase in size also. You may say, I want a blouse that I've been wanting to buy for a long time. I want, a car. <laughs> I want a car, which would be the end. Well, I was going to say, what you don't want to do is, you don't want to say, wow, if I lose three pounds the first week, I'm going to buy myself a car, right? right? The reward has to match, has to be There's nowhere to go. <laughs> That's right. It has to be commensurate with the level of achievement. So yeah, rewarding yourself, I think, is extremely important. I just want to mention real fast about reward. So on my Instagram, um, I try to give people incentives. Uh, so that they can kind of lose the weight and be rewarded. If you go to my Instagram page, at Dr. Ian Smith, spell the doctor out, I-A-N Smith, you'll see a two-week free shelter-in-place plan, as well as several little three- to four-minute videos that you can do right at home without any equipment. So part of the motivation, part of the rewarding yourself is take it week by week and then see how you do and then kind of respond accordingly. I love that. So I follow you on Instagram, of course, and you're always just making everything just look so easy. But this is really because you have a lifestyle that you're living and what you really aim to do is help people. Each time you come out with one of these books, you are aiming to help people make a lifestyle change. And you've given us so many different variations and options to go about doing that. And I think that, you know, in order to teach it, you have to live it. And on Instagram, you certainly are <laughs> living it. <laughs> So what is your, what motivates you to keep going and what advice can you give to those people who just can't seem to get past that first step? 
Well, I love life. I know it sounds simple, but I love the fact that I'm breathing, that I'm able to do things and be productive. I also respect death. I respect that there's an end to all of our lives, no matter how famous you are or rich you are or intelligent you are, it doesn't matter. We all have that end date. And so, and it's uncertain for all of us. And so for me, what I'm motivated by, I want to do good things. I want to experience life to the fullest, but I also want to leave a legacy. I want to I want to leave here knowing that I've helped people and that I help people achieve their dreams and I've achieved a lot of my dreams. And so I think I'm just really inspired by uh, the ability to do something, to accomplish. Uh, that to me is what's really fun. It's not about houses and cars, though they're nice and I like them. It's more about kind of how you impact people, right? For someone to say to me on Instagram, you know, thank you so much. I lost the 30 pounds. I'm off my blood pressure medication. My blood sugar levels are regular. Those kind of rewards to me are the are the highest end yeah yeah it's like mission accomplished right what i want to mention quickly before we run out of time in mind over weight uh you talk about emotional eating and during this pandemic needless to say people are going through all types of emotions you've got depression boredom uncertainty uh loneliness frustration stress anger the list goes on and on so how do you get a grasp on that and not really just, you know, get in a place on the couch and just continue to eat and eat badly. Yeah, first of all, I want to tell people that it is very common and very normal to want to reach for something to eat in these times of anxiety uh, and stress. So that's, you are very normal, join the crowd. Now, what I try to get people to realize is, if you ask yourself a few questions before you eat, for example, when was the last time I ate? Am I really hungry? Do I really need this? What will this really do for me? When you ask yourself those questions before you reach for the food, at the end of those questions, you still may reach for it, but it may actually, for some people, delay them from reaching for it. Or they may decide, well, instead of eating all of it, I'll eat half of it. And so I think that it's important, and the book kind of takes you through these mental strategies of figuring out whether or not you actually want to do what you're getting ready to do. And I think that's all part of the mindset, right? It's about evaluating and thinking. We, don't, we do things a lot on reflex. We don't think about things sometimes. And so when we're sitting down and eating food, are you thinking about the food you're eating? Are you thinking about the textures and feeling the textures and the colors and the aromas and the taste? So be more mindful of things and you become more in tune to it and less likely to kind of go off and binge and, 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 and go off the trail per se. No, I have to laugh because you know I'm guilty. <laughs> And I, I always feel so motivated when I'm done talking to you. So I'm going to get started tomorrow. That okay. Is a true fact. And the thing is, in Mind Overweight, you give us some thoughts to live by. And uh, one of those thoughts, every day is a chance to hit the reset button. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Tomorrow I'm hitting reset. I know I have to drink more water. I know when I go to the grocery store, if I don't buy the garbage, I won't eat garbage. So it's those things that we all know, but it certainly doesn't hurt to be reminded every now and then. And exactly uh, that's what you're doing in this book. Again, it's mind over weight. Always a pleasure talking to you. Yes. I just want to remind people to go to my Instagram page at Dr. Ian Smith, spell the doctor out. I A N Smith. Take advantage of all that free content I put on there for you guys to try to do a little better each day. Absolutely. On Instagram, it's at Dr. Ian Smith. And on his uh, website, there's DrIanSmith.com. And you're also on Facebook, right? Yep. You can link okay. to my, my um, page and go right to Facebook. All over social media. Thank you so <laughs> much for all of your help and another great book to add to the collection. The, the book, again, is Mind Over Weight, Curb Cravings, Find Motivation, and Hit Your Number in Seven Simple Steps. New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Ian Smith. It is always a pleasure. You take care of yourself. You too. Thank you. Be safe. Absolutely. When we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll talk to a family medicine physician. Uh, she'll tell us more about eating healthy and boosting your immune system. We'll do that right after this. <laughs> 